What's going on, everybody? I wanted to do a quick episode on investing on Flippa.com. A lot of you guys have DM'd me and asked me about my previous real estate investing series, and I wanted to follow up with Flippa.com because a few people pinged me a couple weeks back about uh, managing a portfolio and how I manage my portfolio from Flippa.com. And if you guys aren't familiar with Flippa, we'll give some context for that, where it's basically a marketplace for people to buy and sell websites. And some of the websites on there are curated by their team called the Editor's Choice, and they will have various different types of websites. You can get Amazon FBA, you can get uh, you know regular AdSense, passive income type websites, and you can also get dropshipping e-commerce websites that are on Shopify there. So it's a pretty robust marketplace for getting websites. And when you think about acquiring a website, some people think that's like a six or seven figure deal, but a lot of these are small time entrepreneur uh, people, one man shows or one woman shows that are blogs, they're uh, you know, drop shipping businesses, so it's a couple of hours a week and it can be automated. So I have been in a couple communities over the past two years now where it's a couple of other entrepreneurs that manage a portfolio of passive income based sites. And there's a couple of them out there. The one that I wanted to focus on today was Flippa because it's the lowest barrier to entry. They're like these sort of uh, auctions that happen. And I wanted to go through that uh, real quick. So. I am gonna be doing some follow-up videos on this because it's been pretty heavily requested over the past couple months, and I'm really interested in it, so I wanted to just do a couple follow-ups. But the first initial video is, I wanted to go through some of the lingo that people use on Flippa and give you a sense for uh, the price points and the diligence that I do, as well as some of the other investors on there, what they do. So first and foremost, it's a marketplace where sellers that have websites, whether they're profitable or they're just uh, interested in selling them, they come, they make their postings, they're approved by the Flippa team, Flippa does their diligence, they plug in through AdSense, they plug in through Google Analytics, uh, and they make sure you know they can track where traffic is coming from to verify it and make sure that everything is legitimate. So on that end, on the seller side, you have that. So on the buyer side or the investor side, investors come in and they buy portfolios and that is usually at a multiple of the monthly or yearly revenue. So on average, I'm seeing a lot of funds that are getting into the space. They are doing about a multiple of two uh, for year, yearly annual revenue of the business. So if a business is making $10,000 a year, they would be paying $20,000 to acquire that business and get that cash flow monthly. And on average, what I see going on, if you roll up your sleeves and you go on Flippa, go through all the different websites that they have on there, you can get anywhere between a 10 to 15 to sometimes 20x multiple of the monthly recurring revenue. Uh, and that is, or just monthly revenue, and that is a pretty pretty substantial return on your investment. In some cases, that's 100% ROI in a year. And there is risk to this, just like risk with any investment. Uh, you know, you are going through a third party, you are going through um, someone on the other side that is selling a product to you. Uh, so there is always going to be a little element of, um, of risk. But I wanna make sure I got the good lighting here, yeah. So when it, when it comes to the diligence process, uh, when you find one of these websites, when you go through it, if it's in a different niche that you're interested in, if, whether it's Amazon FBA, whether it's uh, you know, a fashion site, an e-commerce website that's drop shipping, uh, you know, an AdSense passive site that you're interested in, a content website where you're publishing content or you hire a writer to write content for you, there's a lot of them on there. A lot of different niches going on there. Find one that you're interested in, and once you find that, there's a few things that I wanted to mention that I have found very useful and uh, a bunch of other investors have found useful as well. So when you're on 
the listing, it will show you a few things. It will show you the traffic. It will show you the traffic source. It will show you the amount per month uh, of traffic and you know the source that it's coming from. And then it will show you the financials. And the financials will be broken down per month uh, in what looks like a matrices that is broken by your uh, your month, your cost, and then your profit. So when you're looking at that matrix on your screen, it's important to make sure that you know you have a pretty substantial and consistent um, level of profit coming through, especially if it's a passive based in, in passive based business, like an AdSense business, for example, where it's just relying on traffic organic search and your ads are making the money for you. So uh, that's that's the the basic layout. And what will happen is when you're scrolling down, you will see that there are comments where people can comment and there's actually files that you can pull up and you can download and you can check them out. And most of most people will put like a video that shows that they're going through the, the revenue in real time um, on their website and the different sources of revenue like PayPal and Stripe and stuff like that. So uh, the first thing that I look for is the consistent profit um, on the websites that you're going to be looking at. So if it is a, um, you know, a, a business that's making 80% profit margin, which some of these are, you want to make sure that it's, per, it's consistently doing that. And also um, in tandem with that, I'm checking traffic. So the good thing about Flippa is that it shows your traffic above your um, your profit. So when you see that there's consistent a, a good green line across uh, that it's consistently organic traffic coming in, and then you look at your uh, profit margin and you look at the costs associated with it, it's just a flat line pretty much. When you're looking at passive based investments, that's a good thing because you're looking at consistent cash flow. So uh, I right now, I say that's the first priority for me. And when it comes to communicating with the sellers directly, there are a lot of different tactics that people are using right now. But what I usually do is uh, I start with uh, 12 months of monthly revenue up front for the business as the initial offer. Many people really like that. And that sounds like uh, you know, a low amount to a lot of investors that are going to watch this, but it is a good amount for a business that's, you know, someone's trying to get rid of it. And usually I ask, are you, are you willing to do a 12 X monthly multiple of revenue up front for the business? Why are you selling the business? Um, and also, um, what is the main source of traffic? to the the website so you know if it's a website that is a drop shipping business that's 100 percent using facebook ads and it's just a funnel setup and it's almost like a coin operated business on facebook ads i'm not interested in that that is a very difficult business to pick up off of someone else's account uh, very difficult so uh, first and foremost i check the consistency between the traffic and the profit and the costs associated with that because there will be different spikes depending on the business model. But uh, the golden goose in this business is SaaS businesses where you get a customer base, you get an email list, and you acquire all of the technology and the IP from a seller and you are able to uh, you know, obtain that business and that recurring revenue and really improve it from there. So. Myself, where I sit in in the ecosystem is I've been both sides, the buyer and the seller, multiple times on each side. And by far, uh, you know, I've enjoyed a lot of different resources out there. But um, SEM Rush is one that I use all the time and similar web. Those are the two main main sources that I look at because that shows the uh, the traffic and the sources, the SEO, basic rankings, and things like that. And that gives me a sense for what's going on in the background of you know the land of Google when it comes to the actual site itself. So uh, yeah, the second bit that I wanted to focus on in the last piece here is that when you're looking at a website that you're interested in, 
is you you really need to focus on uh, why the seller is is selling the website. So when someone is um, in a situation where they're trying to sell their business, it's either that they're trying to do something else, which is what most people will say on the site, is that, hey, I wanna focus on a different venture. Uh, that is usually 80% of the people out there that are just actually, they're honestly trying to find something else to do because they manage a portfolio themselves or they're just really trying to do something else. So that's probably the number one thing that I look at and I ask upfront why they're selling uh, because I have invested in businesses in the past from Flippa and other websites that are, um, you know, they, they fall out. The bottom falls out when the, a new owner comes in and that's part of the game. That's part of the business when you're dealing in, a, in an untraditional asset class, you have people, uh, run you have things happen you have when the transfer happens people fall out and um it's a real it's a risky maneuver there but it happens so um yeah you're gonna want to ask why they're selling that's a big component to this whole this whole magical equation any untraditional asset where you can get 100 percent roi in a year um it's there's going to be some risk involved there. So not financial advice by any means, not telling you guys what to do, but this is just what I'm doing and I'm going to be sharing more information about the portfolio that I have from a couple, a while back um, that I've been managing for a while and it's been a lot of fun because it's passive. I spend like maybe, maybe five hours a month, uh, an hour a week maybe on it, just making sure things are operating fine on GoDaddy and, and Namecheap and my different registrars and making sure the hosting's up and running. And I mean, managing a passive stream like that in an untradi untraditional space is pretty dreamy. Um, and I've enjoyed it primarily because of the cash flow, but also because of the people I've gotten to meet. There are a ton of people that are website investors that are, you know, privy to really great deals in the background, but also people that just spend their days on Flippa. And um, I'm gonna be linking to Flippa below so you guys can check it out. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section and what you guys think. But just to sum up everything, when you are on Flippa and you're looking to invest in a, in a business, look at the traffic sources, the amount of traffic and the amount of profit and the consistency, making sure that it's a steady stream and they're, they're straight across. And uh, even if there's a couple jumps, that's fine as long as it's consistent. And then also the why, why people are selling their websites and uh, really drill into that and, and figure that out. Uh, but that is it for this. I'm gonna be doing a couple more videos about Flippa and let me know your thoughts on investing in untraditional uh, businesses like this and investing in uh, small websites that are you know profitable, 100,000, 5,000, whatever it may be a month uh, in revenue. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I'd love to love to talk to more people about this. It's such a great space and all the entrepreneurs I know in it are really scrappy and it's fun to, fun to talk to them about it. So that's it for this episode. Um, I hope you guys like it. If you did, slap a like and I will see you guys on the next episode that I'll, I'll try and cover more about Flippa.